What's up everyone, this is Justin from Make Supply and this video will be a build along tutorial for the Western Roper style wallet. This template is a free PDF download. If you are watching this on YouTube, you can look in the video description below to find a link to the website where you can download this template set and print it out. Um, it comes in letter size paper, also A4 size paper. In the PDF, you'll have two options. Um, for the outside styling. One is the standard uh, sloping style outside, also the Western Peak style. And you can use either one to work uh, this video. The inside is four card slots on the center, a card slot on the left, a cash section on the left, and some storage behind the card slots and some storage over on the right hand side here. This template is also available as an acrylic template set if you're interested in purchasing one. There will also be a link to that in the video description below. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to uh, thank you guys for watching the videos. Um, I know it's been a long time since I've done one, but I'm going to get back on a regular schedule. Everyone's been keeping me busy with purchasing, uh, you know, stock templates and your own custom templates, and I really appreciate it. And I just wanted to say that. So let's get started. All right. So before we get started and take inventory for the entire project, I wanted to do a little segment on printing out this template because it's a little different than any of the previous templates. Uh, with all of the previous templates that I've done videos for you can print all the shapes out on a regular eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Um, for this template set, you have to um, print a larger uh, shape than will fit on a regular eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Um, so if you have just a regular printer, regular eight and a half by 11 paper, and your printer doesn't support borderless printing, uh, you're gonna have to use poster print. So what poster print is, um, like I mentioned before, you print out different segments of the shape onto different pieces of paper, and then you connect them together to make your larger shape. So as far as I know, the only way to do this is you have to have Adobe Reader installed on your computer, and you have to, um, you have to open the PDF in Adobe Reader to then access the poster printing um, segment of the program. So you would do your file print and then it'll say, you know, print regular size or print poster print. There might be some other options. I'm going to put a little um, screenshot of the settings that I use uh, in this video. It should pop up right about now. Um, so what I do is I switch to poster print, make sure everything is scale 100%. Um, the cut uh, cut marks I put on and then the overlap I use a quarter inch I use 0.25 you can change that to whatever you want so what that is is just how much this temp uh, this side will overlap onto the other page um, when you're putting it together it really doesn't matter what you put you can put whatever you want so that is how you then will print out the larger panels. So this is the inside panel that we'll be using and this is the outside panel. Um, the uh, inside card slots and all that stuff print out on one regular piece of paper. Uh, I don't know how this applies to A4 paper. Um, I've never tried it but maybe you can just print it straight out um, or if you have a printer that can print larger pieces of paper you're probably good to go. So, first thing you'll notice is um, some, if you, when you put cut marks on, you'll notice these li set of lines at the top and the bottom. These are where you'll be lining up your alignment. So how I do it is, I go to the middle, that middle dash there, and then I cut on this template, uh, whatever one the left hand side is. I just cut that line straight off. So I'll do that now.
Okay. And then I go ahead and line up that middle, that edge that I just cut there with the middle line on the other page. And then, you know, you can also, you want to make sure the lines of the template, you know, they're nice and straight with each other and the edges of the paper are nice and straight with each other. Okay, just like that. So that looks like it'll be pretty good. So then I'm gonna go ahead and use some rubber cement. Um, I would recommend uh, rubber cement or glue. If you have double-sided tape, that's probably fine too. And what I'm gonna do is, in that section down there, that quarter inch section, I'm just gonna put some adhesive and then lay down the other side of the template, lining up my dashes and my template lines. <laughs> template lines, sorry. There. <clears throat> okay, and then I just kind of you know push it down, and I'm going to allow this to dry. So I'll explain what my next step is while this is drying, and also, please, when you print this out, uh, before going too far, make sure that the dimensions listed on the pieces are uh, correct. Uh, I know a lot of printers, I get a lot of um, questions about the scale and sometimes printers are scaling down the pieces to fit on the paper and then people are going off of that. Um, that's incorrect. You got to make sure it prints at 100% scale all the time. So just make sure that, you know, at least the, uh, the height here, seven and a quarter, it's, it's good. And then from the tip here, 10 and 10.2. Yep, it's about right. So, that's good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to then uh, take my cardstock templates and I'm gonna glue it down to another piece of cardstock just to make it a little stronger. Um, this isn't a necessary step, but I think it's uh, a good step if you plan on maybe making more of these out of your paper templates. So I'll show you what I did with the inside panel already. So I took this one, I put it together, I cut out the pieces, and then I glued it down to another piece. So now you can see I have a nice, decently firm template, which also is great for when you're doing sections like this, which can be very flimsy. You want as much um, you know, strength in the template as possible. So what I did here is just did a rough cut You know, give, give yourself some space. We're not cutting out the template yet. kind of did a little, you know, quarter inch rough cut around the whole piece and then grabbed another piece of cardstock. And uh, I'm gonna glue this onto this piece. Again, you don't have to do this step. I just think it gives a little bit more security.
worry more about the outside than the uh, inside. But you can put a little bit on the inside too. Okay. So I'm just gonna lay that down. It doesn't really matter where, just somewhere on there. Give it a nice press. And now I'm gonna let that dry and then I will cut out my template. So I'll kind of review some of this in the next step where we um, dissect what, the, what parts of the template mean what. Uh, but you know, if you don't know how to post a print, uh, I hope this uh, helps out and gets you, uh, gets you going. Okay, so let's go over the inventory of tools and leather and hardware that we'll be using to make this long wallet. Um, if you've never seen any of my videos before, I try to use things that aren't, you know, super hard to acquire, things that aren't, you know, specialized machinery or anything. Uh, it'll all be just uh, standard hand tools. And if you, you know, miss anything in this overview, I'll be writing all of this down in the blog post that corresponds for this uh, project, so you can always check it out there. So starting with the leather, this is a three ounce natural veg tan from Wicked and Craig. Uh, it's gonna be undyed, unoiled. It's gonna go straight, you know, straight bare piece of leather there. Normally I use Herman Oak. Um, I decided to give the Wicked and Craig natural veg another try, and you know they gave me a really nice side this time, so I'm happy about that. So it's just you know one main piece for the body panels and then I can get a couple card slots off of this scrap because I don't want to waste any. So moving on, um, this project does require hardware. So the snap fasteners that I'm using for this project are Line 30 uh, solid brass snaps from Buckle Guy, buckleguy.com. And I'm gonna be using long post and short post. So that just refers to uh, the post length of the snap. Um, I would suggest getting both just for your own use and your own projects. Um, so that's what I'll be using for snaps. You can use what you like or what you have. Um, just a standard cork back ruler. Uh, number two exacto knife. C.S. Osborne scratch all. Wing divider for marking stitching grooves. Um, for marking our stitching holes, I'm going to be using these Crimson 3.85 uh, diamond stitching irons. And for thread, this is uh, Amy Roke linen, uh, white linen thread 532 size. I'm going to be waxing it with you know, one of our leather craft waxes, two John James needles for stitching. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to add for setting the snaps, the corresponding hand tools for snap setting. Uh, moving on to make the holes, just a generic um, rotary punch. For gluing, this is uh, some Leathercraft, uh, five Bings Leathercraft cement. I jump around to different types of glue and cement that I use. I really like this recently, so I'll be going with that. A uh, cup of water for burnishing edges. Some binder clips for holding uh, the glued pieces together. Dremel for a sanding, a sanding bit and a uh, Coco Bolo um, burnishing bit. So this I'll be using for quicker sanding and burnishing. Various grits of just regular sandpaper. Uh, wood slicker for burnishing edges. For beveling edges, this is a number two uh, Ron's Tools uh, Montana Edger. I believe it's a Montana. I might, I might have got that wrong, but I'll, I'll, I'll list the um, what it actually is in the um, description in the blog post. But it's a edger from uh, Ron's Tools. Very nice. Um, Saiwa, I believe, um, Jabity Skiving Knife for skiving edges and I will be using just a generic uh, rubber mallet for punching for using the stitching irons and for setting the snaps 
Okay, I think I covered everything. If I missed anything, I'll bring it back when I get to that step. I'll introduce it. And next we will discuss the template. Okay, so let's go over the template, um, what everything means on the templates, and how that corresponds to our finished product, which is this uh, long lot here. Okay. So if you are using the free downloaded template, we'll go over that first. Um, like I discussed in the first step of poster printing, you know, I um, glued my pieces together and then I cut this out and then I cut the outside out. Then you have your template sides. Um, the outside and the inside panels are the same size. However, using the paper, I thought it was easier to break them out into two pieces. So this one has the cutouts and faces. If you're using the tip, if the tip faces to the right, the outside panel has no cutouts and the tip faces to the left. Okay. So, and then you have your card slots. This is the inside panel card slot that goes here. This is the vertical card slots that go here. And this is the um, bottom card slot for the vertical. So, um, let me jump over to the acrylic template real quick and then we'll jump back and do the details. So if you decide to purchase the acrylic version, it only comes with one body panel and three in the three card slots. Um, being that this is the same size as this, um, this is this is a nice, you know, strong uh, tracing template. So you can easily, you know, you put it down this way to do your inside panel details. And then for your outside panel, you flip it over and mark the outside and your two holes and you're good to go. Now there's no reason to ship two pieces that are the exact same size. So that's how, it's the only difference with the acrylic version. Okay, so let's go over <clears throat> what's on these panels here. So as you can see, there are lines marked on the inside for the bottom alignment for your T-slots. So when you're tracing, you don't want to cut these out. You can just mark them with your scratch all through the template into the leather. You also have um, marking for your um, inside panel card slot. Again, there's some line, uh, there's some circles um, placed onto this template where you can mark through if you want to mark, um, lightly mark where the alignment will be for the edges of this card slot. So I'll probably mark somewhere around the first holes and maybe one in the middle and then one at the bottom just so I know where this sits on, side the, on this panel. And then you have uh, holes for marking where your snaps go. Uh, also, when you cut out these sections, you'll be tracing this onto the leather because this is the cash slot sections. For the outside panel, it's a little simpler. You're just going to trace the outside and then mark one, two, three, four holes for your snap fasteners. Just remember that when, I'll, I'll discuss it when we're putting it together, but there are no holes on this side for the inside panel. Don't mark any holes on this side. And these are pretty self-explanatory. You'll trace these onto the leather and we'll be good to go. So next we will start by tracing our patterns onto our leather. Okay, so let's get to tracing. Um, I'm going to, obviously in the template set you have the option of doing the uh, peak version or the non-peak version. Again, here's the difference in the two. The insides are all the same. So I'm going to do the peak version. <clears throat> so go ahead and grab your template and your leather. Um, I noticed that when I print this out, I printed out an older version of this design where the T-slots aren't correct. So I'm going to use my acrylic version to, t to trace the inside, that's all. 
but I'll use the paper one to do the outside. So I'm glad I caught that because that would have not been fun. All right, and you can kind of move these things out of the way here for now. Okay, so starting with the outside, I'm gonna grab my scratch hole, I'll trace. So for the outside panel, all you're gonna do is trace around and then mark in the center of these dots with your scratch hole. These will be placements for your snaps. Okay. Probably can't see that on the camera, but I scored all my lines and my two snaps. The next one we'll do is the inside. So if you have the paper one, just put down your inside panel. Obviously, like I said, I printed out an old version, so I'm going to use the acrylic. Just put that down and trace. Okay, <clears throat> so first I'm gonna mark my T-slots. Then I'm gonna do the uh, inside cash slots here. For the <clears throat> sorry, for the card slot inner panel here, I'm just gonna mark lightly a couple of these little dots here. And then for the inside panel, only marks for snaps go on the one closer to the peak. and then trace the outside. Okay, so went ahead and traced that. Um, now we will mark uh, the card slots. So I have a little space on this side, 
And then I have my scrap piece here to get a couple more out. So I'm gonna do that next. So you're going to need three of the T-slots, one of these, and one of these. Get this stuff out of the way. Start with this piece. Okay, so just went ahead and traced three T-slots, one of the inside panel card slots, and the bottom slot here. 
so I am going to go ahead and uh, cut all, just go ahead and cut all these pieces out. So make sure don't cut through your T-slots and don't cut through your um, card slot placement. Don't cut that out. Make sure to cut out these two parts here. And then we will come back and look at everything we have. Okay, so I just went ahead and cut everything out. Get the scraps out of the way here. See, outside panel, inside panel, card slots. And card slot over here. Okay. And you can see how you, know, you flip this over. And then that'll be like that. Okay, so the next step will be to do our uh, edge finishing on our card slots and any other section that won't be accessible once we put things together. Okay, so on to burnishing our card slots. So take anything that's not related to card slots out of the way and bring them forward. So with this card slot, this one has to be burnished all the way around. So you burnish this part, all this, and this. Just because once you put it down, there is no way to access the edges. Um, just a note, if you need uh, help with edge burnishing, um, I'm sure there's a good amount of videos on YouTube you can check out. Uh, I'm not going to go over the details of any kind of techniques or anything. I'm just going to show it for what we're doing in this project. Okay, so this card slot, burnish all the way around. I already did it, you can see that. And then for these card, um, these card slots, you're only going to be burnishing the top edge. Okay, so I did it for one, two, three. And now I'm going to do it for this one. I'm just using water. And just put a little bit of water on the edge there. Try not to spill too much onto the front, which I keep doing. And then I'm using a wooden slicker. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. Put a little bit of wax on it. Let's go over it again. Okay, so now at this point, you're gonna repeat that process for all your other card slots and get all the top edges burnished and then all the edges burnished on this one. And our next step will be to We're going to do the card slide on the inner panel onto uh, its position here. And we're going to glue it down, stitch it up. Okay, so first step will be get these things out of the way. Take your card slot and whatever you're using to make a groove, I'm going to use this wing divider and mark your stitching line on the outside. I use about an eighth inch.
Okay, I don't know how, if you can see that or not, but I made a little uh, groove on the outside. So now I'm gonna grab my inside uh, piece, note where the holes are that I marked for aligning this, just so I have an idea. I'm not going into a blind. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my leather craft cement. And just put a little bit on around the outside. And then carefully place it in place there. You don't want to move it around too much because that, that glue will smear. Giving it a second to, you know, glue down. All right, and then from there, I'm gonna grab my stitching chisels, the uh, nine prong, and then the two, and then I'm going to mark my stitching holes first before punching all the way through. So I want to have a nice overhang, a nice even overhang, here and here. So to do that, I'm going to start, just like I do in my other videos, I'm going to overhang the one prong slightly over the edge there, give it a little bit of space, and then start marking my hole. Okay. The other side, I'm going to do the same thing. So now I know exactly where that will tie off on both sides, nice and evenly on the end. So then I'm going to walk it forward, same way as the other side. Now I'm going to walk this to this end here and hopefully it lines up neatly. If not, you just fade the holes in. Okay, so in my case, it's actually spot on. The holes line up. That's good. As you can see there, we marked our holes. So what I'm gonna go do off camera is punch these holes through, come back, and then we'll look at it and then get ready to stitch this down.
Okay, so took my chisels and went around and punched all the holes there. See? So now it is time to stitch. Um, go to, like I said, I'm using uh, Amy Rook uh, linen and it is the 532 size in white. So I cut a little piece there, put a little wax on here. If you need, um, you need help with saddle stitching, I did a saddle stitching video a long time ago. Um, it's in my YouTube videos. It's also on the website if you're on the website currently looking at this. And that'll go over exactly the method that I'm going to use to stitch everything in this tutorial. I love the sound of waxy thread. Okay, so I'm all set here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, two holes in, back stitch, back stitch, go forward all the way around, go to the end, back stitch, back stitch. So that's all I'm going to do, and then I'll come back and we'll look at what we have. Okay, so I just went ahead and finished stitching that card slot onto the panel there. Got my thread coming out the back here. Trim the thread. If you want to burn those ends, you can do that. I'm not going to do it. And then I'm just going to use this end of this, the butt of this knife here just to... down the stitches. Okay. And now we have our card slot. Okay, so the next step will be to, uh, we're gonna prepare these card slots with some skiving, and then we're going to line them up and get them stitched on to the middle here. Okay, so this next step is uh, really important to the build process, especially if you're using um, a slightly thicker leather. So this is the leather I chose here. It was a three ounce all around, um, which is a decent thickness. Um, if you are using anything three ounces or higher uh, for your card slots, skiving, the inside, uh, skiving the backs is going to be important. Um, when these T-slots get put onto the panel here, as you start adding them, the bulk in the middle starts to rise. So just imagine under that section right there, there's you know a couple layers of three ounce leather, so it starts to bulge, as you can see here. It's not super visible when you're using you know something like three ounces or thinner, but it's definitely there. Um, you can kind of see, so the card slots won't fit completely flat. Um, so you have to then sky down the back of the pockets just to make them fit a little nicer. I already did it on a couple of these here. I think this is the one I haven't done. So I did it on these two. All I did was take my skiving knife and shave down uh, the bulk on the back and the middle here. So I'll do it on this last one here. This knife is... I don't know what happened to my sharpening stone and this knife is very dull and it's being a pain so a little trick I like to do with, you know, if I'm struggling to sky, is I just dampen the leather back a little bit and it helps it come off. Ideally, you'll have a nice sharp skiving knife and this will just pop right off, but not in my case. Okay, so I'm just going to take my skiving knife 
uh, this is a little glass piece of uh, um, glazing glass, I guess. And I'm just going to put this down on here just to have a hard surface. And what you would do is, you know, just work off some of the bulk. I did a little bit already, so there's not a whole lot more I'm going to take off. You know, it's, it's especially important around the edges here. Just take my little glass and try to flatten that out. sure it'll really do anything this step but you never know okay so you would go ahead and do that skiving step to your the bottom of your three card slots here okay so now what I'm gonna do is uh, clean up this mess and then we'll go ahead and start attaching these to the body Okay, so time to put these card slots onto the middle panel here. Uh, as I showed in the step before, we're going to be stacking them three deep and then one bottom one. So you know you have your markings for your card slot bottoms, so that's how they'll line up there. Um, first step I'm going to do is grab my um, wing divider and mark a little line, stitching line on the bottom of all these. stitching lines at the bottom there and time to glue these down so I like to do this by I'll glue this one down lightly just so I can still move it around and then I'll quickly stack the other two and three here and then move it around to get it in the right final position I just think it's a nice way to because you know if, if you start lying these down and maybe it's not perfectly straight or in the right position by the time you get to the bottom here it might be all messed up and by that time you've already put it together so I like to do it this way so just a little you don't need a lot just a tiny bit okay a little glue So then I will line it up on that line there, line it up on the edges here, try to get this straight. And then I'll go ahead and just throw these on here. shift them up a little bit so I'll just kind of pull this whole thing up a tiny bit if you can okay so that looks good over here Pull them off, and now you have where your one slot should be. So while that glue dries, I'm going to take one of my chisels, mark some holes on that line there. Like that. 
and now I'm going to let this dry for a minute and then I'm going to just stitch those couple holes there and then we'll come back. Okay, went ahead and stitched that down. Got my thread here. Snip it off there. And then repeat the process again. A little bit of glue. Okay, just put it in place there and I'm gonna, you know, do my um, test again to make sure everything is lining up good. Okay, looks good. So pull everything away and just put some pressure on the glue. Go ahead and mark my holes. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and punch this through, stitch it, come back, and then we'll do the last one, and then we'll put this one on. All right, second card slot, uh, second T-slot done. Trim the thread. And last T slot, same thing. Also, while I'm doing this, here's an extra little tip. For this one, when you're cutting this template out, it's okay to leave a little extra in the length. That way, you'll always make sure it'll always be long enough to hit this point. The worst is when you're doing this and you realize that your card slot is a little too short to match up with the, uh, the panel. So if you want to put a little extra, you'll always you know, make sure that it covers any unforeseen uh, gaps that you might have cut. And this way you can make sure all of your T-slots are nice and butted up against the one above it. Okay, so that looks good. As you can see, I did that, so, or maybe you can't, I don't know. Um, I have a little, like, millimeter hangover that I'll just trim off. Same process, let it dry for a second, <clears throat> mark your stitching holes. Go ahead and <clears throat> punch through and then stitch that bottom and then come back. Okay, went ahead and stitched that last one on. Same thing, trim. Okay, so now hopefully those are all lining up decent for you. Mine are okay. And then the last part will be this one. So before I do that, I'm gonna um, glue the tabs down.
one second. My glue is leaking out of the bottom. Great. another video where I have a lot of glue problems too. I don't know what it is about me and glue. So then I'm going to glue those tabs in place. Grab some binder clips and clip them down. Okay, now I'm going to put some glue down all around the outside perimeter of this one except for the top. Sorry about all the barking dogs. I'm working right next to a dog park. I hear them all day. It's crazy. Okay. So I'll put that last one in place there. I'm going to add some more... Uh, clips. So let's see what we have here so far. And now I'm gonna let this dry for a minute and then we're gonna come back and start marking our lines to stitch um, the sides of the uh, card slots here. Okay, so I let this dry for a little bit. Now it will be time to get our uh, card slots stitched. Take these off. So first step I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this inside edge here. I'm going to use the Dremel just to go quicker. So I'm just like folding this over just so I can access the inside edge here and use the Dremel to sand it flat. just to add another layer by hand here.
Okay, that should be uh, pretty straight. Open it back up, and now we're gonna mark our stitching line. So with this, you have two options. Um, and it's good to decide beforehand. If you want to do it the way where this card slot section is freestanding from the back, I'll show you an example here. So the way this is stitched down, it's it's just like a freestanding section. Um, I would start my stitching line right above the card slot, right above the card slot. If you want to do this where you know that on this side here, you're going to stitch all the way through. So it'll be coming out the back here and there'll be a line of stitching on the outside. So it's, it's blocked and you can't go any further than this. I would start it closer to the top up here just, uh, you know, so it looks good on the back too. Otherwise you'd be stopping right about there and it would just look weird. So you would want to go from end to end, end to end. So I'm going to do it freestanding like it is here. So I'm going to start here, go down, start here, go down. stitching line, grab my chisel, and then do hand pressure, overhanging the last prong over the card slot, edge, I'm just going to go down to about there. You can go down all the way if you want, but uh, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to go to about there. Okay. So, and like with any other stitching step, what I'm going to do is off camera, I'm going to punch all this through and then I'm going to stitch starting up here. I'm going to start at the second hole, back stitch, back stitch, come forward all the way down backstitch, backstitch, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I went ahead and stitched that side there. Time to move on, so I will cut off thread. Take this guy off. stitches a little bit. Okay, so same thing on the other side. I'm gonna bend this bend this down a little bit so I can access this edge. And it looks like I have a little bit of overhang on my card slots, so I'm gonna take my knife here and just trim straight. Should be wearing a dust mask when doing that. Dust everywhere. Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Mark my stitching groove. And then go ahead and mark my um, stitching holes.
Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to punch all the way through. And then this time I'm going to, you know, st still going to start from here. Back stitch, back stitch, go up, back stitch, back stitch. And then we'll come back. All right, just finished the uh, other side. Let's see here. Wasting a lot of thread as I see. All right, where's my clippers? Okay, and now our panels are all stitched down. So, for our next step, we will be doing this. Uh, we are going to burnish, finish and burnish these inside edges here. And if you want, you can burnish the edge here. I'm gonna do it um, now, just to match this side. But if you're, if you're not burnishing, like if you're just leaving these raw and you're leaving all your edges raw, I would probably suggest, you know, also leaving this raw. You don't wanna have a weird combination. Okay, so since we already sanded this, I'm gonna go ahead and just bevel the edge. There is this overlap section here, just do your best. If you can't really get it, just worry about it later with uh, burnishing. It takes a little finesse. Okay, back. So now for this, you could use your, I think I'll, I'll use this, I won't use the Dremel. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip this over so I get better access to this inside edge here. And grab my water. You have some um, sections that maybe aren't as smooth as you like. You know, you can always get a little sandpaper. I use a high grit sandpaper and just do a little wet sand all in one direction. Hopefully that uh, smooths it out. Yeah, it looks to help help out a little bit.
Okay. See that there. And you can do, you know, as much edge work as you want for yours. You go crazy. Do a couple rounds. Um, I'm just going to do the one. And on the other side, same process. This one's a little rougher on this side, so I'm going to take my sandpaper and try to smooth it out. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. So the process will be the same for this inside edge here. And if you want to get them, these inside edges here, um, it's just one layer, so be a little bit more gentle, use a little bit less water. Same on the other side. Okay, and that'll be good for now. All right, so let me move some of this stuff out of the way so I don't spill water everywhere. All right, so as far as our, well, let me trim. Remember how I said I had a little overhanging section here, so I'm gonna trim that off.
now we're good. So, all of our stitching for all the panels and everything is done. Now, what we will do is, in the next step, we will set our snaps on the outside, uh, the outside panel and on the inside panel, and then we'll continue. Okay, so now we will place our first set of snaps. Uh, I'm going to move some of the stuff out of the way. And with this step, um, double, triple check your snapping things and setting them in the right uh, orientation and right direction because once it's there it's there and if you mess up you're gonna have to start over okay so first one we will do is on the outside panel so go ahead and take your inside panel put it away and you'll, know, you'll remember that there are holes here holes here here and here okay so we're only worried about these right now the ones in the back so away from the uh, front peak here I'm going to go ahead and take out your snap pieces, so I'm only worried about uh, the bottom. I forget what these things are called. Each each place, each uh, part has a name, but so this is what the uh, the bottom of the snap is. Um, okay, so I'm going to be using the short post for this uh, since it's only one layer. Uh, if you don't have short posts, you only have long posts, and it's too much um, when you put this into here like this, and then there's too much post left, you know, you can always put a, a washer, so just cut a leather circle, you know, to give it a little bit more um, meat in there, so that way you don't have too much of the post sticking up. If you're using a snap setting uh, machine, it doesn't matter, it'll just do it perfectly straight every time. So I'm going to go ahead and grab short post, two posts, and two of the other part that fits on top of the post, and my snap setter tool. And then my uh, hole punch. So what I'm going to do now is punch the holes in the back. Find the hole that you marked. And on the other side. Two holes for our snaps. So now the back part here with the post goes through the back. And out the front. Just like that. And then this will sit on the outside just like so. Okay? And then you will, well, you don't need this tool for the flat backs. So what you'll do is go ahead and put it onto a hard surface. And you know, add your uh, tool in there and then hammer the snap into place. I'm going to go do that now. I can't hammer on this table. This table's not strong enough. So I have to take this over to a different place to hammer these snaps in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put both of these in. Just like that. And then hammer um, those snaps into place. Okay, so as you can see there, I um, just set those snaps in. Alright, so for the next step, you have one or two options. If you want to go ahead and punch the holes for the other snaps on both sides, you can do that. Um, or you can wait until the very end and once everything's put together when we actually put the snaps in on both sides. Uh, I suggest waiting, but if you don't want to wait, you can go ahead and mark them now. I'm going to wait, and now what we will be doing is um, 
connecting these two pieces together. So what you're going to do is turn this over, put this one down here, and we're going to go ahead and glue around the, you know, lightly glue around the border all the way these two pieces together. Okay? So let's do that now. All right, and now you want to gently put this down and work your magic to line everything up. I would suggest um, clipping, you know, once you get sections that you think are good and nice and aligned, put some clips down. And then go ahead and try to keep working the rest.
Okay. So that looks good for now. I'm going to let this glue dry for a minute. I got some extra snaps. I might as well put them on here. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit and then we'll come back and continue. Okay, so I went ahead and let that dry for a little while. And now I'll take off my clips. And we can see our glued together wallet so far. Alright, so next step will be to do a real thorough sanding. Uh, we want to straighten up all these edges. I could feel a little, you know, overhang on certain parts here. So what I'm going to do is use the Dremel sander and I'm just going to go around these edges a couple times and try to straighten this up as much as possible and get off this excess glue that might have uh, stuck out. So to do that, since I'm going to have a lot of dust, I'm going to put on this uh, handy dandy uh, bandana. Be careful around the peak there. Take off my mask here. There's probably no way that's good for you to breathe in. Okay, so let's see here. Did an alright job, so that was just kind of like a rough sand. So now I'm gonna go around with another piece of sandpaper by hand and just um, you know straighten it up. And in that previous step, if you don't have a Dremel, you can just hand sand it. It's just going to take longer, that's all.
Alright. Examine, make sure it's, you know, decently straight. You don't want one side hanging too far over the other side. Otherwise your stitching will be uneven. Okay, this, so this looks pretty good. So I'm going to dust off some of this and then we'll come back and mark our stitching groove. Alright, so time to mark our stitching groove. So, like I always do with my projects, I mark a groove on both sides. Um, just to get, you know, when you're punching your holes through, if you check every once in a while to make sure that you're lined up on the back, it just keeps a nice consistent straight line. And if you do make a punch where maybe you go off course a little bit, it's real easy to uh, see where you should be coming back to. So, this will be the back and this will be the front. So, I'm just going to put a groove on both sides. So I've got a lot of questions about using a wing divider instead of a stitching groover. So I always use the wing divider because I'm always doing projects that are with lightweight leather. So a stitching groove, uh, a groover is going to take material out of this layer when you pull that groove. And it's already thin leather, so you're just going to be, you know, weakening the leather more by doing that. You don't really need, you know, a, a deep groove for leather this thin. It's not getting like you know, a lot of work, like if it was a saddlery or something like that. Just a wallet. Okay, that was the uh, back, now this side. Marked our groove, it's probably hard to see, but marked it on both sides. And for our next step, we are going to mark all of our stitching holes. All right, let's mark those holes. So, using the peak template, I know that I want a perfect starting point in the middle of the peak. You know, otherwise, why would you have a nice design like that? If, you know, what if you start over here and you're marking your holes and you get there and it's like, you know, it's not centered. You know, who wants that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right in that middle part of the peak and go out, come all the way around, start again on this side, go out, come all the way around. And since when we close this, this folds this way, this folds this way, right over here is the outside back corner. So that's the most, you know, the least visible corner. So I'm going to and somewhere over here. Hopefully they line up close, but if not, we'll just fade in the, the marks, okay? If you're doing the one without the peak, um, I would suggest just starting back here, going around and then coming over, because you don't have the peak to worry about. Okay, so where's my eyes? So I'll be using the nine prong and the two prong. 
this part here, since it's uh, in a continuous curve all the way until you get here, you have to use a two prong all the way around until you get to the straight sections. So my girlfriend's watching TV in there. You can probably hear it in the background. Okay. So now that we've taken care of marking our holes with the point there, you can now take and got around the edges, you can go to the more prongs and go straight. I'm just going over something in my head. So actually I lied. I'm going to end my stitching line somewhere over here. Because when this is folded this way, this would still be visible. This will be folded this way. This back section here would be the least visible. Okay? So I'm going to go around to about this section right here. Right about where that lip on the right hand side is. Okay, so right about here is where I want to go. Okay, so now I'm about where I want to be on the back, so now I'm going to go back to this section and then meet up over there. Okay, so let's see what happens here. It's definitely not a completely even mark, so what I'm going to do is mark here and then mark right about there. But then since you can see there, 
that is not even like uh, this isn't gonna make it to the next hole and be perfect so what I'm gonna do is find my scratch hole and just move over where I put that hole right a little bit further so it kind of fades it in the middle there so I'll have to take an awl and punch that hole through which is okay so that is where I'm gonna start and end my stitching okay so as we see here got everything marked I'm gonna go ahead and punch all these holes through and then we'll come back and look at it before we stitch it okay so I went ahead and went around all those marks that we just did and punched them all through I'm gonna show the last step that I was talking about before so here's the outside here's the inside okay and what I was talking about before with fading so let me try to get this on the camera here. As you can see right here, um, I have that one little circle hole that I marked because it's um, not equal distant with the prongs. So what I'm gonna do is take my regular awl, a diamond awl, find that mark, try to you know match up the angle of the, the diamonds that are happening already. And then I'm just going to mark that hole there. Like that. So I'll just use that point as my uh, starting point and ending point for my stitches. Okay. Like that. It's not perfect, but it'll work. All right, so now uh, it's time to stitch. This is a, uh, a marathon of stitching, let me tell you. So grab a beer, grab a coffee, put something on the TV, because you're in for a, a long stitch. Okay, let me find my thread. So with this, I recommend measuring out your thread just so you don't waste any or so you don't run out. I almost ran out uh, one of these I did before. So how I do this is I take four times the perimeter. So let's take a piece of thread run it around the outside, roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and I take that times four, more or less. If you're ever in a doubt, just take a little more. Uh, it's better to waste a little thread than to run out mid-project. Okay, so I got my thread. Wax this up a little bit. Okay, so I waxed my thread up and I have all my holes punched. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go stitch this up. This is the outside, this is the inside. So this will be to your right hand side. And then, like I said, I'm gonna start, um, where's my hole? There's the hole I'm gonna start at. I'm gonna go this way, stitch all the way around, come back, end it off, and then we'll see what we have. 
All right, so I just filmed that whole last scene uh, without the microphone on. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and redo uh, what I just did. So basically, at the end of the last, the previous scene, I finished stitching and I trimmed my thread off, went around and tamped down my stitches on both sides. And this is what we're left with. And now all of our stitching is done. So before we add the final snaps, I'm going to go ahead and finish the edges. Uh, it's just a lot easier to access, um, access the edges when the snaps aren't on there. So I went ahead and did a, you know, a little uh, sanding, a little rough sanding all the way around, just to straighten up the edges a little more. Uh, I went ahead and put a little bit of water on the edge and did a damp sand all in one direction. So I just took the sandpaper, pulled in one direction to, you know, pack down the fibers all in one direction. And I just followed all the way around. Okay. And then we are left with this. So our next step will be to do our edges with the edger and then burnish. And then after that, add our snaps and we're done. Okay, edging time. Oops, all this stuff out of the way. Grab your edger, go around on both sides. Okay, outside. Okay. Now it is time to burnish. I will switch to the Dremel just uh, <clears throat> to add for a layer of quickness when I do my second round. So I'm going to go ahead and do one round with the wood slicker and then another quicker round with this. Again I just use regular water, if you have gum trag or whatever you use is fine.
Wish I had a sponge for this. I'm always really paranoid when burnishing natural veg because uh, if the water leaks over, it looks terrible. So I like to do it in sections. I'll just do this long section first. Okay, so now I'm just going to repeat the same process over with the Dremel.
Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop there for my edges. You can keep doing more if you want. Um, try to get this on the camera. Looking pretty good. Could be a little better. Okay, so I'm going to let these edges dry out for a minute and then we'll throw some wax on, do another quick once over to push the wax into the edge. And then we'll come back and put our snaps on. Okay, let's uh, throw some wax on here and call it a day for edges. So as you can see, we are almost done. Looking nice. Okay, so our final step will to me will be to put on our last snaps here. So in the tracing portion, you marked the front, uh, the the whole snap uh, position on both sides. So you should have a little mark on both sides there. Go ahead and grab whatever hole punch you're using and carefully punch your hole. I'm going to punch from the outside in. That's one. Okay, so let me find some snaps. Okay, so for the this portion of the snap, I'm going to be using long post to fit through both of these layers. So here's a long post cap. Going to need two of them, and then the other part. I guess the socket sounds like it makes sense um, that goes on the opposite side okay so I am going to I'll just put them on here this goes like this like that there so what I'm going to do is find my snap setter. Here's the tool and here is the base for my snap setter. So what you do is you put, I'm sure there's videos online on how to do this. Uh, you put the appropriate cap, uh, the cap into the appropriate holder. So it keeps that concave shape and then you punch down. So I'm going to go do that real quick and then we'll come back and we'll be done. Okay, so I just went ahead and put those snaps on inside and the outside there. And now we are done. Let's see how your wallet folds up. Grab some uh, stuff to put in here real quick. So, you know, you have your card slots. that 
got your other card slot over here. Uh, section for cash. And then this middle, you know, you can throw maybe some receipts or some folded cash over here. Uh, probably some other cards too if you want. And then if you're a checkbook carrier, if you're a old-fashioned kind of guy or gal, go ahead and uh, you can throw that behind the post there, the post of cards there. Or you can, you know, you can stuff some other stuff back there. Fold it up, and you're good to go. Okay, well that will conclude the build along tutorial for this uh, Western Roper style, uh, Roper style wallet. If you have any um, questions, feel free to leave them in the comments for the video. Sometimes I'm slow to reply to them. I usually forget that they're even there, but I will try to get back to everybody that asked a question. And thanks for watching.